Hey students, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the Old Testament story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is one of the most memorable accounts in history, and it's a story about taking a stand for truth when the whole world is bowing down to a lie. And it's actually a perfect story for youth because this is something you deal with on a regular basis uh, in your life, at your school, with your friends. So pay attention to what we're going to learn from this lesson today. Now let's kind of look into the story real quick. Let's set the story up in case you're not familiar with it. It starts in Daniel chapter 3 from the Old Testament. It says this, King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, and he set it up in the province of Babylon. And then it says in verse 4, a herald shouted out and said this to all the people. People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, all those other things, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue, and anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Now, what a story, right? Maybe you know this story already. Obviously, what you would expect to happen, happened. Everyone bowed down. Nobody liked the idea of being thrown into a blazing furnace. Now, you probably wouldn't either. In fact, one of the questions in your youth guide this week is, what do you think you would have done? And before you answer too quickly and say that you're this great spiritual person and there's no way you ever would have bowed down, just be honest. God is listening. Are you sure? I mean, for me, myself, I don't even really know exactly. I would like to think that I would know that I'm not going to bow down to some, some stupid idol. But when you think about the stakes, maybe, maybe when it came down to it, I don't know. It's kind of easy to talk yourself into doing something you know is wrong because of what would happen to you if you didn't do it. So look at what happens here in the story. In verse 12, it says this, that, that the king's herald comes to him and he says to the king, hey, there are these Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon, and they pay no attention to you, and they refuse to serve your gods, and they do not worship the gold statue you have set up. I mean, what an incredible thing. So get this picture, students. Everyone is bowing down. Everyone is worshiping this false god that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up because they don't want to go into the furnace, and I don't blame them. But these three guys, these three Jewish guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're going to say, we're not going to do it. We refuse to do it. They knew not to do it. That sort of thing takes courage. It takes courage to stand against the crowd like that. You know, for you today, students, think about this for yourself. Let's go ahead and pause for a second before we continue the story and think about in your own life the kind of peer pressure you have. Obviously, there's not going to be some 90-foot statue that you're going to be told to bow down to. That, that would be too obvious. But there's all kinds of things that happen in your life, in your school, when you're hanging with your friends. There's all kinds of pressure to bow down to a lie, to do something that you know is not right, is not appropriate, that goes against what you believe. Maybe even just this week you experienced something like that. Maybe it related to drugs or pornography or something else, else sexual. Or, or maybe it's related to something simpler like uh, just sort of disobeying your parents, you know, clearly disregarding your parents you know what they want. You know what they've said. You told them, yeah, mom, yeah, dad, I'm not going to do that. And yet when you're with your friends, everyone else is doing it. And it's just a whole lot easier to do what everyone else is doing than to stand up for you know what's right. You know, it takes courage to do what these three guys did. And it takes courage, young people, to stand up in your culture today, all these thousands of years later, See, look at what they did right here in verse 16. It said this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He'll rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. What amazing 
courage. Here's the question now for you students. What in the world did they do in their lives to come to a place where they had that kind of courage? And this is the second point. Courage, that kind of courage to take that kind of stand comes from a deep personal conviction. You know, a conviction, if you don't know what that word is, a conviction is a deep down belief. When you have a conviction about something, it's something that you believe to the core of you. It's not just something on the surface that you could easily be swayed with. It's a deep down belief. And you'll see in the story, if you read the story, that this conviction started with knowing God's word for themselves. These three Jewish guys, they knew what God said. They knew what God's word said. The very first commandment, they understood what it was. It was don't serve or bow to any other God. That's the very first commandment of the Ten Commandments. It's more than just a movie, students. It's actually in the Bible. You can read about it in Exodus 20. And they knew that they weren't supposed to bow to any other God. In fact, there's, an, there's another thing that they understood called the Shema. It was something that every Jewish boy knew. Twice a day, he knew that it, this. He comes from, it comes from Deuteronomy 6.4. It says, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Could you imagine that? These three Israelites said that from a time, the time they were a little boy. Twice a day, they would, they would quote Deuteronomy 6.4. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. They knew that. They understood that. They knew God's word. They knew God's truth. And that's where their conviction came from. So that when the king of, of Babylon is saying, bow to this or else, they said, no, we know what's true. They had their own deep personal conviction. Students, you need that. You need your own conviction. If you're a follower of Jesus, you need to read the word for yourself. You need to know God's word for yourself. It's not enough that your parents read the Bible. You need to know it for yourself because someday you're going to have to stand up to that kind of pressure in your life. And if you don't have that deep conviction for yourself, then you're going to bow down with everybody else. The second thing we see is it wasn't just that they knew God's word, but they had experienced God. They had experiences with God. You can read about that in Daniel chapter 1 and in Daniel chapter 2. They knew that they were gifted by God. They had experienced the power of prayer in their own life. And students, I'm sure if you think about it, maybe talk about it with your small groups, you'll see that that same thing happens for you. That when you begin to look back in your life and see that how God has blessed you with good parents, with a good home, with, with whatever, with, with intelligence, Maybe some of you aren't that smart, so maybe find something else God blessed you with. But you look back and you recognize that this is a gift from God. You know what that does? That strengthens your conviction that God is worth worshiping alone. And this is what these three friends had. They had that kind of conviction, and as a result, they had the courage to take a stand when everybody else bowed down to the lie. And there's one more thing we need to see in the story, and it's this, that the stand that you take will benefit others. You know what happened in this story? These three guys get thrown into the fiery furnace, and God saves them. He spares them. you got to read it for yourself. It's, it's really, really cool. It's a miracle of God. There was a fourth person that, that they saw in the fire. It was an angel from God. Some people say that it, it might have been Jesus himself. He was in the fire. He protected them. He saved them. They came out of the fire. And then look at what happened as a result. Read this with me. In verse 28, it said this, Nebuchadnezzar the king said, Praise to the God of these three guys. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any other god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of these three guys, they will be torn limb from limb and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble because there's no other god who can rescue like this. What an awesome story. You know what what we want to see from this? Is when these guys took a stand, the whole nation benefited from it. And students, when you take a stand, the people around you will eventually benefit from it. In this story, everyone else got to know, got to learn and understand that their God was the real God. So think about it. All of these people had an opportunity to meet the real, true, living God, the creator of the universe. And students, the same is true in your life. When you take a stand for the truth, when everyone else is bowing down to a lie around you, there are going to be some people who benefit from your example. There are going to be some people who see what you did, and they're going to want to know about the God who you serve. 
And you can share with them and make an incredible impact on their life. Make a difference the way these guys did, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because they stood for the truth when everyone bowed to a lie. And you can do the same thing in your lives. Talk about that with your small groups or with a mentor now.